Our gospel reading for the day comes from the gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the warming of all of our hearts as we come to full knowledge of what God has in store for us. From this, the word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. I want you to think here for a second. Jesus goes with his disciples out onto the sea. And he goes to sleep. Immediately. And just as he is deep in his slumber, the storm rages. And that boat is being rocked and cast and pitched side to side. It says, in fact, that there was so much water pouring into the boat that it was being swamped. Now, I have been on a boat one time in a nasty storm, and it was a fishing charter that we put out, and I was the only person who had paid to go on the fishing charter who did not end up seasick. Everybody else on the boat was sick. So much so that my father-in-law will refuse to ever go on a boat with me ever again. <laughs> and I remember standing out on the deck because everybody was inside sick. And they were really sick. And that sick was contagious. And so I remember with my hands holding the railing as the boat pitched. And at one second I'm looking up at the sky and then at the next second I'm looking down into the water. And it's that constant pitching back and forth. This boat was pitching back and forth. And there was a storm that was raging. And Jesus was asleep on the job. So the disciples thought. In fact, if you entertain me a little bit, because it doesn't say it explicitly here in our gospel reading, but I have a feeling that this group of disciples, some of whom, if you will remember, were fishermen because that was their job. They were used to storms at sea. They were scared. They were afraid. 
that storm was getting the best of them. And as they stood there, there was probably a voice of frustration that bubbled to the surface as they looked at Jesus and said, Can you believe it? He's asleep. Our Savior is asleep. You know, the guy who's in control of all of this stuff, he's asleep on the job. And their fear was getting the best of them. And they finally woke him up and said, hey, Jesus, we need you. Jesus immediately wakes up and says, peace be still. And the waves subside, the wind goes away, and everything clears up. As you and I know, there isn't a single passage of scripture that we are given that doesn't have a greater context than just what we read. Because you and I are constantly going to be facing storms in our life. And how often do we find ourselves thinking that Jesus is asleep on the job? How many times do we find ourselves looking at Jesus saying, where are you? How many times do we have those crises of our faith where we look and, and think, I'm, I'm I'm all betwixt and bewildered and I don't know where to turn and I don't know what to think and I don't know what to do. And God, where are you? And I would even venture to say that these lovely disciples probably slipped back into their pre-Jesus days as they were facing that storm. They probably had some unchristlike thoughts. I would even venture to say that they had some unchrist like words as they were facing that storm that was brutally battering them. And I bet they had some unchrist like words towards Jesus himself. Look at him sleeping over there. Is he going to let us drown? And we too find ourselves in those storms in our lives battered and beaten against the waves. Battered and beaten against the day in and day out process of our lives. When we might find ourselves staking that claim and going, this isn't fair. Why are you doing this to me? Are you asleep on the job, Jesus? Why am I facing this struggle with addiction? Why am I facing this struggle with cancer? Why am I facing this unemployment? Why am I facing this disease which is tearing me apart from the inside out? Why am I facing these moments when my fear and my doubt are getting the best of me? Why am I facing these moments when my sins are so overwhelming that I, I want to stop, but I can't stop? Why am I facing these struggles with my family? Why are we facing these crisis-filled moments? Jesus, where are you? And friends, we only have to turn on the news on any station and you will see in the current events of today, people everywhere, all over the place, crying out, where are you? We don't have to just turn on the news. <clears throat> We can see it right here in our own hearts. Where are you, Lord? The disciples were poking the finger at Jesus right there on the boat. 
Why are you asleep on the job? What they didn't realize is that the ultimate peace that they have is in realizing that we want Jesus right there asleep on the job. Hear me out. There is no better place for Jesus to be in the midst of the storms that we find raging around us than reclined on the cushion in the heart and soul of the struggle that we're facing. Because if Jesus is asleep on that job, he has ultimate control over it, doesn't he? Jesus is the one who can calm that storm like that. And he's saying to us, have enough faith. These storms are going to beat against you. These struggles are going to be real. These struggles, these moments, they're going to happen. But have enough faith to allow God to be right there in the center of it, right there in the midst of it. And friends, I would want nobody more to be asleep on the job, asleep on my boat in the midst of my storms than Jesus. Are we empowering our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to live right there in the center of the struggles and the conflicts that we're facing? Are we allowing Jesus to take up his home in the middle of the struggles that we face? Are we claiming the name of Christ right there in the center of it? Every single one of us is going to face those storms. Every single one of us is going to face a moment of struggle. And the question is, when we face those storms in life, are we only going to think that they are meant to tear us down? Or are sometimes the storms that we face meant to refocus our life? And that's the greater challenge that comes to the surface in this. Jesus' disciples were looking at this storm that was raging around them, and they had missed the point. They just saw that they were being attacked and brutalized. They were being beaten against the walls of that boat. And they were ready to throw in the towel. <clears throat> they were scared to death. And Jesus was laying there asleep. Because Jesus knew that he had them. Jesus has you and I. And friends, I'm going to tell you, there is no storm, no crisis, no disease, no sin, no fear, no death that God will not overcome on your behalf. There is nothing that our God will not control. I have faith that in the midst of these stormy moments, God awakens and says to us, Peace, be still. Not only do the storms subside, but you and I, we are given a new peace in the face of it. 
it says that as soon as Jesus calmed the storms, the disciples were challenged. Why are you so lacking in faith? I've been right here among you. I've not gone anywhere. In fact, I am so comfortable with my place of control over this that I can sleep because I've got this. And you don't need to worry about it anymore. Friends, are we ready to take our faith to the next level of saying, Lord, I want you to take everything that I have, my struggles, my frustrations, my hurts, my pains, and I want you to be the Lord of every bit of it. Lord, I want you to take my anger and my pain Lord, I want you to give me a new life. And God awakens and says, peace, be still. This place, your hearts, my heart, we need more of that God who is asleep on the job. And says, I've got you. I'm not worried about any of this. So you don't need to either. It's a new level of faith. For us to step into that boat. And be unafraid. And fearless. Because God's got you. As a people of faith, may we hear loud and clear, God wants to be asleep in your boat. God wants to be in the center of your storms. And God wants to be the stilling force that says, peace, be still. May you offer every bit of what you have. The good, the bad, the hurting, the struggling, the righteousness, and the sin. And may you place it all before your God today. He is asleep on the job. Because he's got it. And may we find comfort and hope that no matter what storm rages around us, God has his hand on your life and is changing you from the inside out. May our God's faithful witness be that today. Jesus says to you and I, sinner, give me your storm. Give me your rage. Give me your hurt. Give me your battered ways. And I will give peace over every bit of it. Peace. Be still. Let us pray. Jesus, we call out to you today. We empty ourselves before you. Battered and beaten. We call out. Sinners lost and confused, we call out. Righteous and scriptural bound, we call out. Born afresh and born again, born anew, we call out. 
We are your children, Lord. And we feel you. We see you. We hear you. We know you. As we call out, we know you've already been here. You're in our hearts. Now awaken us that you've never really been asleep on the job. Your comfort and your care is so much that you've got control over every bit of our concerns. And that you've got this. You've got us. Break our hearts today, Lord. Break our hearts open that we live for you for the first time, for the best time, for all time. <laughs> we awaken you and you call out, peace, be still, and we find hope and love and encouragement. Lord, we need revival today. Every single one of us needs to be awakened in new and different ways and paths that you would have us to walk. Come into this place. Come into this moment. Come into our hearts and send us where you would lead us. You have us. And you are so comforted by us that you can be asleep in the midst of who we are. And you can be awakened in the midst of who we are. Because you have ultimate control and authority. And so Jesus, right here, right now, change our hearts. And let us go as you would call us to go. And all God's people say, Amen. If you're able then, let us stand and join our voices together in our final hymn, My Life Flows On. <clears throat> Yeah.
alone while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Our God calms the storms of our lives. Our God saves us from our sins. Our God remains faithful to us when we are faithless and lost and confused. God never leaves us. That rock, that cornerstone, that foundation, that platform that holds us fast. May we never lose sight of a God who holds us in the palm of his hands. May you go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may you be blessed this day to be a blessing unto others. God is awake in this place. In those storms he controls. Go now in his peace. Amen. Amen.